And he started saying, after I kill you, I'll leave. So when he said he was just going to do this and then go, then she actually didn't fight all that much. I, was, I, I closed my eyes to make him think that I was dead. We're told in Matthew 19, 26, that with God, all things are possible. How many of us actually trust in that promise, though? We serve a God who can do incredible things, and the most spectacular is when he saves one of his children. This week, we're joined by two guests who share a striking testimony about how God's power and goodness saved one girl from a certain death and brought her into a new life. Before we join them, though, we want you to know that our 2020 Promise Calendar is now available. If you would like to receive a free Promise Calendar with daily Bible verses and a monthly devotional, please visit worldchallenge.org. Your support makes a difference. Please consider donating to power the mission and make World Challenge resources like the Promise Calendar and this podcast possible. Now here's our host, Gary Wilkerson. I'm so glad you guys are here today. Uh, I'm Gary Wilkerson with the Gary Wilkerson Podcast, and we're in for a really good story today. Uh, Holly, we we're so happy to have you with us, and uh, Nora, thank you for coming with us today. Uh, you're from Cambodia, and, you, and you've been there for 10 years now, and what, uh, tell us a little bit about your ministry there in Cambodia. You're working with, uh, uh, what, what's the name of the ministry? The, um, the Girls, Girls House of Refuge. Girls Half, House of Refuge. Yeah. And t- tell me, what, what, the, what is that? Yeah, God told me to open a home for women, okay. so for young women, and um, so I did. And then he would bring, he would choose and bring the ones he wanted to. Um, so he ended up bringing girls that were pregnant or girls that were got raped and different girls. Also, just really poor girls. Mm. Um, so I started getting a name for being willing to take drug addicts, being willing to take alcoholics, being willing to take traumatized girls that are all knocked up. Right. They're pregnant, nobody else can help them. And um, so other Christian organizations in the country mm-hmm. would call me and say, mm-hmm. hey, will you take this girl? Or hey, there's this girl, or the, this person's okay. trying to sell this girl, this like little girl, like wow. 14, 12, oh, whatever. Wow. And um, so I would take those kind of girls. And then also with women's ministry, you're drawn to women. So when you go out in public, mm-hmm. girls are drawn to girls. They're going to like mm-hmm. just see, and they want to share the gospel as we go through the whole Bible in a year at my house. So mm-hmm. um, they want to practice what they are, they're, they're studying. And it's really cool because they're baby Christians. So right. everything's new, um, which I love mm-hmm. that because yeah. it's just really innocent, right. in a sense. Wow. Um, yeah, so... And you still live in the home where the girls come in now, yeah, after, even after ten years. Yeah, we all together. Yeah. And and that's uh, Phnom Penh, or yeah, in Phnom Penh. Okay, so you have uh, Nora with you here today. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, me and Nora. she came into. Uh, did you first meet her? But she came into your house, or did you know her before? Or uh, how did you meet Nora? I met her because um, one of my girls. She's the cousin of one of my girls okay. that lives with me, oh. and um, my girl posted. Um, she was in this hospital that wasn't great. Um, and her hand was cut off and everything. And she said, can you pray for my cousin? And I was like, what's going on, honey? And so I messaged, I got, you know, that's my mm-hmm. girl. So personally yeah. called her, talked to her. And um, cause I wasn't in country at the time I was in America. <coughs> and so I called oh, okay. my staff and I said, Hey, can you go meet up with our girl's cousin and see mm-hmm. what's going on? Like what happened? Yeah. And so that's how I met Nora. And right within a couple of days of me sending my staff, I flew in and then went. I actually dropped off my bags and went straight to the hospital to go meet Nora because wow. we had already started a relationship to mm-hmm. help her out. Yeah, tell us yeah. a little bit about how she how okay. she ended up in the hospital. Jen Jai Jai, Robie Dal, Nora Dalpet, Ja, Ja, Oi Da Gat Lang. Tang Pi, Du Gan Lau Tham Pet Nang, Du Gan Tang Pi Da Mao. There was a, a guy and he, he did really bad things to me. He wanted to kill me. This guy, he, okay, let me make it a little clear for her real quick. So um, this guy had done things. He had kidnapped her before mm. and... Um, he had stolen her virginity and a lot of things mm-hmm. had happened to her and he had, was kind of stalking her and um, nothing ever happened to him. And then later on, he figured out a way to meet up with her. What he did was he, cause he's a businessman and that really rich in their, in their mm-hmm. village, he's the richest. And um, so her, he, he had her cousin 
say, hey, tell, um, I'm going to give you this business moto card thing. Like, tell, I'm on my, I'm on a way to a business trip. Will you tell her to come pick up this card from me? Hmm. So her cousin told her, hey, go meet this guy and pick up this card. And so where, you know, where do I meet her? And so she said, oh, on the, the, this, out in the middle of a field, really, kind of mm. off a dirt road, mm. um, place that's really secluded and just get the card because uh-huh. he's in a hurry. He's got to go. And it was like four in the morning, Ooh. mind you. Yeah, scary. Because so, their uh, cousin is a seller of chickens, you know, and they get the chickens from this guy. You know what I mean? So it's all like, yeah, village yeah. kind of things. So yeah. that's why she went to go meet him. But when she met, went to meet him, he just, he doused her with battery acid. Okay. And after the after the acid, she turned around to run. And then he 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 had a, a butcher knife. She heard the sound of the butcher knife, and then he started hitting her head. And she put her hand up to block, and then the butcher knife went through that uh, her right hand. And also on her arm. And he he was hacking. And he grabbed her hair. And then she fell on the ground. And he started saying, after I kill you, I'll leave. Mm. And he started hacking her hand because the, the, the knife was dull. When when um when he said that he was gonna kill me and then leave, then I thought, okay, well then, I'll I want him to go. So so when he said he was just gonna do this and then go, then she actually didn't fight all that much. She mm-hmm. like put her hand <coughs> out and mm-hmm. let it go. Mm-hmm. <coughs> And so he put his foot on her arm and he grabbed the hand and he started hacking. Wow. Maybe not this many details. <laughs> so the blood started squirting out. It was from her head, from her arm. He stood over me for about um, three or four minutes. So I was I, I closed my eyes to make him think that I was dead. And then after that he he left. Mm, thank God. Yeah. And then I opened my eyes and I could barely see but I saw that he wasn't there. I didn't know what to do. I was all by myself. And it was so quiet in the field. I was laying there. And I started, because I was laying flat, I was just looking up at the sky. And I said, God, please help your child, please. And all of a sudden, there started to be light. And something lifted me up. Mm. And I was able to walk. Mm. I wanted, I felt like I wanted to sleep, but somehow there was like strength and I don't know where it came from. Mm. And, and, and I, it helped me to see, like I could see what I needed to get because the battery acid had gotten in my eyes. Mm. I was able to see if the phone in my purse. And I was able to call my cousin. Mm. And and I was like really tired and I, I, I laid back down. Uh, but when I lied down, laid down that, that time, I was actually laying on thorns and an mm. anthill. 
And they come out and they bit me all over. Mm. She has scars all over her back from the ants. Wow. Yeah, and the thorns. <coughs> Maybe five minutes later. They, my, they, they say sister, but it's really cousin no. came and. Um, when she came, I was able to sit up. She didn't lift me up. It was God. He was lifting me up. And I was able to go on the moto. And we went to the doctor that was really near there. But the village doctor, they're like, we're we're not, we can't not help her because they won't take you if they think you're going to die in the village because okay. it's bad, it's bad karma to think that the ghost is going to be around haunting the hospital, so they won't take you. Mm. And they didn't, they didn't wrap. They just said we can't do anything about your hand. They didn't even mind you. She picked her hand up with her. Oh, okay, so she, had, <laughs> so she had her she hand, with, a, hand she with her. She brought yeah. her hand with her, t- and they just they did they. Rap, uh, anything? Did they do anything at all? Or just get to an eye? Get to an eye? Get that tongue to. No, they just stuck a bag on it because they they were gonna drive her to Phnom Penh. Okay. So they didn't want blood in their car. How far is where she was living? About two hours. Two hours. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she thinks it only took an hour to drive to somebody Phnom Penh. Was, somebody was flying, huh? Yeah. Uh, can you back up a little bit? When she uh, was laying there mm-hmm. after being. Uh, cut like this yeah she cried out to god but she didn't no, she, she didn't w- have any relationship with god no. at that time how did you know, no. was, she was a, a, a buddhist uh, she was a very strong buddhist okay and yeah and, and for those who don't know buddhist yeah really don't believe in any god there's, yeah there's, there's like spirituality yeah. but not so it was more no being called yeah god. So, so it was really odd that she would call on yeah. god wouldn't, wouldn't it be <laughs> She says, she, I asked her, why did you call on God if you never knew God? And mm. she said, I really don't know. And so she's <laughs> saying, I don't know. I feel like, because she's looking back at it now. She's yeah. like, I feel like Jesus was standing next to me and he uh, helped me to call him. Wow. And during that time, I felt like somebody was near me. Yeah. I felt like somebody was with me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She said, I don't know, because the Buddhism, she thought maybe it was like her, her mom that was already okay. dead right. or her grandpa, but it, she didn't call. She she felt like somebody was there, but she didn't call on she them. Called on she called on God. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So she made it to the hospital in Phnom Penh. That's where she got... Uh, yeah, I saw a picture of her in the hospital. Yeah. That was is that in Phnom Penh? That was yeah, and it, okay. that wasn't the best care there okay. um, yeah. at all. Wow. But the, so, but the picture of her all wrapped up is was that? Yeah, was that they the wrapped her up like a mummy. Yeah, because yeah. um, of the battery acid. Is yeah, that, yeah. Right. And then yeah. Uh, at this point, you did. Uh, and you they still, they just, cut off more of her hand, and at the time they told her they can't sew the hand back on because she'll get cancer. Yes, wow. that's what they told her. Okay. They probably didn't have the ability to do that anyway, I would imagine. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. It, but uh, so you're still in the United States at this point, or are you back? No, I'm, uh, I'm, as soon as, well, she's in the government hospital when I landed. So okay. I went to that hospital. Okay. And you then went we with were... your, your, the girl in your house. Yeah. was her cousin. Yeah. You went with her to meet her. That's well, actually, I her? went with my staff. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's the first time you met her. Yeah. Okay. And, and and she was in the hospital, okay. and I met her. The cousin that she had called, they were there, yeah. Yeah. and um, there was other people there that were dying, yeah. and um, so how I, did and then so how did she get to your house? That's that's a good story okay. too, actually. Yeah. Can you tell us about <laughs> Yeah. So at first when I walked into the hospital, I told her, I said, I want to help you and ch- change the hospital. Uh, I told her, I, we can go to a different hospital and we can, we can heal your face. I was really worried she was going to lose her face because mm. the battery acid was yeah. eating it away. Yeah. 
And at first she was like, no, because she didn't know me, you know. So she's like, no. So, but then I would pray for her, and um, two or three times I would come. I just kept coming. And she's, I started to have a feeling. I'm just translating for her. She started to have a feeling. And, and I decided that I would go with her. I would Basically, she had decided to let me help her. Yeah. And when, I, when I'm with Holly, she gives me a lot of love. I just really see the love. <laughs> uh, and how long ago was that that she came from the hospital to your house? Um... It's been like Let's more than see. years? Or? No, no. no. Oh, um, okay. This is, this is recent. Oh, um, wow. It happened, <clears throat> the attack happened in February. Oh, this is very recent. Wow. Yeah. God's yeah. healed her face so much. Yeah. That was my prayer, you yeah. know? And really? like, it, yeah. you, I actually, the picture, you should see the pictures of her face. Wow. Um, and yeah. God's healed her so much. She's so beautiful inside and out. Yeah. yeah she really is. Too. You can see Jesus in her too. Yeah. 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 So wow. that just happened yeah. in February. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's miraculous. That, uh, the, the, the power of he, the, not only the inside the healing, but uh, yeah. the outside as well. Uh, and now, uh, you know, I, I mean, I don't have to ask this question because I can see it in her eyes, but she, so she met Jesus kind of early on or after a while coming into your house, like where she really knew yeah. who this God she was calling. Yeah, you want me to ask her? Yeah. So, Peldal Chenda Pajia Twai Kluen Hai Nung Tutulja Prey Sukri Pelna. Pel Nyom Mano Mui. So when when I was living with Holly, we lived with a lot of girls. There's a lot of girls at the house. And the girls at the house, they come and they share the word of God with me. But I didn't believe. And then there was a day that I asked um, the Naren, who's another sister in the house. She's actually staff. Um, for a Bible. I want to read it for myself. Mm-hmm. I don't believe what they're just saying to me. <laughs> uh, and that, uh, when you read it, that kind of opened up your eyes then? Yeah. Yeah, I was reading the Bible. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, and last question I have for you, what is your, what is your uh, family that's not Mm-hmm. In the house with you, what does mm-hmm. your what does your family think of what's happened in your life? Eloni Krusa Chenda Mini Ta Baon Chenda Gekut Yamik and Bi Javat Chenda Eloni. And be a widow got lang knock and Javat Chenda Eloni. Quata uh Yom but dear guy bright they say actually when she talks to her family um because she's still in hiding this bad guy's still looking for her okay. we are the like um all things possible is really helping us we've already got a rest warrant out we've been able to go to court she's been able yeah. to tell the judges um but this guy's still looking so she's still in hiding so all the yeah. conversations she has with her family is on the phone yeah. but yeah. they're telling her Every time you've changed so much <laughs> because like just her attitude, just everything about her is so different. I love it. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. It's very, very evident. Well, I'm so thankful that Jesus changed your life so radically and now is using you to change other lives. She'll, she'll be, you know, you've probably already seen this, but yeah. you know, there's like, she's yeah. your second generation and then she'll be leading people to Christ. Yeah. You, you've probably already seen that, right? Then yeah. third generation and fourth generation, yeah. you know, the impact on Cambodia. Yeah. Just like the, the girls be... in the house that we're sharing with them. Those are yeah. girls that all came to Christ on mm-hmm. their own too, that yeah. have really bad traumatic past also. Yeah. So that, like they can minister to each other in ways that, yeah. you know, well, God help me. His word says this, and He did it. Yeah. You know, and, and so they share with each other like that. It's very matter of fact. Wow. It, it, yeah. it really is really a blessing and an honor to yeah. be able to serve the Lord. Yeah. I'm shocked every day He loves me. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, yeah. It's so a, yeah, He alone is worthy. <laughs> yeah. The um, so if somebody wanted to uh, um find out more about your ministry is there any way do you have like any kind of uh, website or yeah we have we have a website if you go to um www.girlshouseofrefuge.com that'll take you right to our website if another one comes up for any we're cambodia okay so we're in cambodia yeah and we'll be praying for you we'll ask those who are listening to your story here today to to keep you in prayer and order you in prayer that 
God will use you mightily to do great things yeah, in the country. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. I really appreciate it. Love your story and love the work you're doing. Keep up the good work. <laughs> thank you. God's redemption in our lives is always an incredible story, and we can never praise Him enough for this good, good gift of salvation. Please be praying for the girls in Cambodia and the many people around the world whom God is reaching. The Gary Wilkerson Podcast is brought to you by World Challenge, sound designed for this episode by Mike Hallsmith. This episode was written by Rachel Schimitz. Our producer is Chris Wickington with video production by Aaron Gale. Tune in next week for a special best of episode of the Gary Wilkerson podcast. We hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Until then, do all you can to live a better life and make a better world through Jesus Christ.